Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. So this week we're talking about a truly interesting movie, Thoroughbreds, which also happens to be Anton Yelchin's final film, or at least one of his final films. Seriously, that dude should win some sort of award for the amount of works of his that have been released posthumously. But all joking aside, the one thing I will say about this movie before we start to get into it proper is that Anton Yelchin is fantastic in this film, and he is one of the main reasons you should see it. But with that out of the way, going into this movie, I don't have much of a story to tell, because really, I had just seen one trailer for it last year, and when I saw that Anton Yelchin was in the trailer, I was like, oh, I gotta see that movie, I love that guy's work. And I'm still really sad that he's no longer with us, because that is one of those actors that had so many great works that we're not gonna see now, because he has long since passed and he can no longer work and make more amazing movies. So damn straight I'm gonna see his last movie, and having seen it, I gotta say, it's a pretty good movie. It's also a very weird movie, and definitely not for everyone. In fact, the best way I can describe this movie is that it's basically Heathersley Creatures. A weird combination of Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures and the 1980s cult classic film Heathers. And so if you, like me, were a fan of either of those two films, then this movie is absolutely a must-see. But like I said, it's not for everybody. It's an extremely snarky film with a really dry sense of humor that you have to get used to. At least I had to get used to it. It took me about 15 minutes of the movie before I truly started to groove with it. Trust me, if you first start watching the movie and are a little off-put, stick with it because it's totally worth it. But yeah, this is a movie about two rich girls who basically plot to kill one of the rich girls' stepfather. And not because he's done anything that is truly egregious, mainly because he is just an asshole. And what I kind of like about the movie is that even though he is an asshole, he is not wrong about the fact that his stepdaughter is a spoiled brat. She's not only a passive-aggressive bitch, she was also kicked out of her school for plagiarism. And she keeps using the excuse that her father died as the reason why she plagiarized, but it is totally not flying. At least I personally didn't buy that excuse. It was very obvious to me that she was just trying to use the empathy the teachers would have for her and her dead father as a means of getting back into the school that she was rightfully kicked out of. But the one thing that she is 100% right about is that her stepfather is completely mistreating her mom. There's this really uncomfortable scene in which the main character is overhearing her stepfather yelling at her mother because he got into a bicycle accident, and the reason why he got into the bicycle accident is because his stepdaughter totally messed with his bike, but he doesn't know that, but despite that, he is still taking out his accident on his wife. In other words, he is taking it out on the main character's mother. So yeah, she is totally right about him being an asshole, but he is totally right about her being a little bitch. And I really like how this movie exists entirely in this gray area. But that is not the most interesting part about this movie. The most interesting part about this movie is the main character's best friend. Because the main character's best friend, who doesn't start off her best friend at the beginning of this movie, but becomes it over the course of the movie, is legitimately a sociopath and doesn't know how to register proper human emotions. But what I like is that despite her being a sociopath, she is actually the best person of everyone else in this movie. Anton Yelchin is a sexual predator, the main character is a plagiarist, the stepfather is emotionally abusive, and even the mom allows the stepfather to emotionally abuse her daughter, so she's not 100% a good person either. Whereas the sociopath girl's big sin over the course of this movie is killing a horse. Which, before I go further into that, I should warn you that yes, there is a horse that dies in this movie, it is off screen, but it is talked about in very vivid detail to the point where I was actually getting uncomfortable hearing about it. It was one of those rare cases where telling not showing was even more effective. So if you have strong emotional attachments to horses and can't handle hearing something like that, then you might want to avoid this movie. That being said, I've warned you and done my due diligence, so there you go. But anyway, the big twist here is that when she actually tells the story of killing the horse, it turns out she actually did it for the horse's own good. She totally did it wrong because she had no idea what she was doing, but you got that she was doing it out of a place of actually caring. And that's something that's not true about any other character in this movie. Everyone else in this movie is acting extremely selfishly. Heck, even the big twist that happens at the end of this movie, when the sociopath girl just completely goes over the edge, she does it because she cares so much about her best friend that she doesn't want anything bad to happen to her. Even when she suggests to her best friend that she should kill her stepfather, she does it because she doesn't want to see her best friend be emotionally abused anymore. Which is very interesting. I love how this movie plays with the sociopath being the most empathetic character in the whole movie. It's an ironic twist, but it totally fits with the ironic tone of the whole film. 
Anyway, I feel like I'm creeping dangerously close to spoiler territory here, so I am going to move on to the spoiler section. But before I do, I'm going to include some sort of Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And since this movie is currently in theaters, I'm not sure if there's going to be a link to the movie proper. But if not, I'll link to another Anton Yelchin thriller I highly recommend, like The Green Room. But even though I'm linking to that movie, you should still definitely see Thoroughbreds in theaters because it is really good. It's just, like I said, not for everybody, so you've been warned. And with that all said, my fellow gorehounds, let us finally move on to the spoilers. Alrighty then, so this movie opens up with a prologue of our sociopath girl getting ready to execute her horse. And I love this opening sequence because it is really uncomfortable, and even though it cuts away before it begins, it's one of those cases where not showing us what's about to happen actually hits you harder than if they had. It's like the shark in Jaws, sometimes intimating something is more effective than showing it outright. And this is definitely one of those cases. So after that opening scene, we cut to the sociopath girl arriving at the main character's house, because the main character has been hired as a tutor for the sociopath girl. And this is where we establish just how rich these two main characters are. Because we have the sociopath girl walking through the main character's house, and it is just a gigantic mansion. A real labyrinth of expensive artwork and just high-class furniture. And she even finds this one envelope inside the house that has the main character's name on it, and inside the envelope is just a shit ton of money. We're talking thousands of dollars. And you get the immediate impression that this money isn't just random money sitting around the house. This is the main character's allowance. So yeah, the main characters in this movie are rich as fuck. In fact, they are so rich that while watching the 15 minutes of the movie, it was really hard to get into the characters because I was resenting how much money they all had. One of those cases where Eat the Rich was playing inside my head hardcore. Come on, baby! Eat the rich! But the important information about this sequence is that these two used to be friends when they were younger, and have since had a falling out for whatever reason, and currently the sociopath girl is being ostracized by the rest of the community because she killed her horse, and everyone's like, she must be crazy because she killed her horse. And as is pointed out by the sociopath girl, the only reason why the main character is even associating with the sociopath girl anymore is because the sociopath girl's mom is paying her a lot of money to tutor her. Which the main character did not realize the sociopath girl knew, but the sociopath girl knew because she stole her mom's password. And thus was able to look at her emails and yada yada yada. And so the next time they meet, the main character says that no, she's no longer taking payments, and she just wants to help her because she's her old friend. And basically the first 20 minutes of the movie are these two characters rebonding after having been separated for so long. And there is a lot of snarky back and forth dry humor throughout these sequences. And because of this, it becomes very clear this is not only a thriller, it is also a black comedy. Hence why I made the Heathers comparison earlier in this review. So anyway, in the middle of one of these tutoring sessions, the stepfather comes downstairs and enters the room, and it becomes very clear to the sociopath girl that the main character does not like her stepfather. And after she figures this out, she starts observing the way the stepfather treats the main character, as well as the emotional effect he has on the main character. And this is when it becomes clear that despite the fact that this character can't feel emotions herself, there's a part of her that either feels like she should or actually does care about her friend. And I forget where exactly it happens in the movie, but one of my favorite scenes in this entire movie is the scene in which the main character asks the sociopath girl about the horse she killed, and the sociopath girl explains that her horse broke her leg, and that because she knew that horses that break their legs are often put down, she thought it would only be right if she, the person this horse cares about more than anyone else in the world, was the person who did it. And she also looked at it as an act of mercy. She's putting this horse down because it can't live proper anymore. And she saw the tragedy in it, that this thoroughbred horse, despite having the best genes and the best chances, had this unfortunate thing happen to it and was afflicted with something that was going to mean it can't live out its life properly anymore. So yes, yeah, she put it down, and her big mistake was that she didn't know how to do it properly, so it ended up being a far crueler and messier affair than she intended. And when you all see this movie, I want you to pay close attention to that scene. Because that's the scene that sets up the entire metaphor for what's happening in the movie. Turns out, everyone in this movie are thoroughbreds. So after a couple sequences of them bonding some more, including one in which she shows her friend how to properly fake cry, the sociopath girl suggests to the main character, why don't you kill your stepfather? If he dies, not only will he be not reigning over you anymore, you and your mom will also inherit his money and you won't need another guy around anymore. And at first the main character rejects this notion and kicks the sociopath girl out of her house. But then she attends this teenage party with all these rich kids, and one of the people crashing this party is Anton Yelchin's character. 
who it turns out is a high school dropout and former rich kid who ran away from home, and is now a 20-something-year-old drug dealer who went to jail for having sex with a minor. And this sparks an idea in the main character's head, so she calls the sociopath girl back over, and is like, hey, did you really mean it when you said I should kill my stepfather? And the sociopath girl initially rejects this because she's like, um, uh, did you just call me over to kill your stepfather? Because I'm not going to do that. But then after talking, she comes around and is like, okay, well, we're going to need an airtight alibi. So after that conversation, they come up with this crazy plan to hire Anton Yelchin to kill her stepfather, and just in case he won't go through with it, they try to blackmail him by recording their conversation where he said yes, while the main character goes to a spa with her mom, and while the sociopath girl is off on vacation somewhere else. Except, come the weekend where it's supposed to happen, he completely chickens out and skips town. Which leads to a falling out between the main girl and the sociopath girl. And this leads to my favorite moment in the entire movie, when the main girl calls the sociopath girl back to her house, and the main girl is acting really weird and the sociopath girl can't figure out what's going on, until the main girl stops her from drinking the rest of her juice because it turns out she drugged the juice, because the main girl, separate from the sociopath girl, came up with this plan to drug her best friend, and then after drugging her best friend and she's knocked out, she was going to go upstairs, kill her stepfather. And then after killing her stepfather, she was going to put a bunch of blood on the sociopath girl and then call the police and blame it on the sociopath girl. And the sociopath girl hears this whole story and is listening very intently. And then she takes the juice and then downs all the juice. Because as far as she's concerned, she has nothing to live for, but the main character has everything to live for. So the sociopath girl roofies herself and then leaves it up to the main character to decide what to do next basically giving all of her fate to this character. And I don't know, if that's not an expression of love, then I don't know what is. It turns out this sociopath girl is actually way more empathetic than the main character. Now as for what happens next in the movie, I'm gonna leave that for you to find out for yourself. But needless to say, this movie has a truly surprising ending that is pretty rough. And not only did I thoroughly enjoy it, I highly recommend the movie as a whole. But like I said at the beginning of this review, it's not for everybody, so you've been warned. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as always, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.